over the last four years since uh, we had the first, no it was six years, sorry, we had 52 cases of severest Lyme diagnosis. I say they were diagnosed Lyme, you will understand that I say so, because they were not Lyme disease patients, they were named like this, but we had more than 50 cases, severe one, it was 60% were uh, young women, like your daughter, and about 40% were spread all over. From older patients, I mean 40 and up, to men. Interestingly enough, we have much less male patients than we have women patients, uh, female patients. We have mainly young patients who come with this severe expression of so-called Lyme disease. Lyme disease is one of the fastest growing uh, diagnoses in <coughs> the eastern part of, of America, of the United States, especially from New York up to, to uh, Boston and even a little bit higher. I will talk about this later a little bit. Some of you might have seen my presentation, which I did two years ago, and which is on the, on the how do you say, YouTube. on the YouTube. Some of you might have seen this. I don't have many basic new information. I only have more details because the information is just what it is. That <coughs> behind line we have many other issues. And when I look back at these 50 patients, or 52, whom we had from the United States as Lyme patients, then not a single one had the same treatment as the other one. There is no schematic treatment which we do. <coughs> and not a single one went away from Paracelsus with antibiotics. It's not needed, but I will talk about this because there are other backgrounds which make the bacteria get so aggressive. I don't doubt about that bacteria are one co-cause to the disease, but it's not the cause. It's only the background which they need to have so that the, <coughs> that the milieu changes the, the bacteria so much that it gets so aggressive. My name was told already, <coughs> I'm medical director of the biggest biological clinic in Europe, the Paracelsus Clinic in Switzerland. We, <coughs> we exist since 54 years now and under my guidance since 21 years. <coughs> Just shortly ago we got new partners, we are now part of a big uh, worldwide uh, system of biological clinics of med biological medication productions which you see at the lowest uh, web page. <coughs> Paracelsus Clinic is a outstation clinic. We have our, our own hotel where the patients can stay, but it's not a hospital with nurses and and beds, it's an outpatient clinic. They come for the daily treatment and they just stay in our hotel. The stay in our hotel is extremely important because there they learn to nutrify themselves correctly. The, the correct diet for themselves, which builds up the intestinal system, which means, which builds up the immune system. <coughs> That's why we have to integrate our uh, own hotel and our own kitchen which where we provide and teach the patients how to do their nutrition. This is beautiful area looking out from the hotel. You see this picture. So it's well it's Switzerland too. We have our own biological pharmacy where you get all the remedies which are needed and <coughs> well you see it here and well, that's not so important here, that I already told you Then <coughs> it is now owned by this group and I'm very proud to be medical director of the whole group now. 
So I would say leading in the treatment of chronic infections with 10 dentists, uh, 10 doctors, 3 dentists, 3 naturopathic doctors. That's unique for our Europe that we have integrated naturopathic <coughs> doctors, MDs, as you say, and the staff is 83 by now. And daily, two to 350 patients. And always about 20 patients from our countries. In, we call them inpatients. Always about 20 to 25. <coughs> Swiss Biological Medicine has an effective treatment program for or against Lyme disease and other tick-borne diseases. For me, it's much more than only Lyme. As you will see, it's much, much more. And we never see that the so-called Lyme patients, I always say the so-called Lyme patients, they are really only Lyme. Not a single of these 50. And the fact that it doesn't work with the antibiotics is because antibiotics make the other causes even worse or it doesn't touch it. For example, the viruses, the lymphotropic viruses for the doctors in here, the lymph-acting viruses. It's an individualized program which works in over 80%. I looked at the cases of these 52 and not a single one was getting worse. Most of them were getting significantly better and we had several cases like Jacqueline, your daughter, who came out of invalidity, of full capability for working or for going to school or for learning or even for concentrating for a <coughs> short time. It makes patients heal from the side effects of unnecessary and hurting antibiotics, that's my opinion, and it makes the patient less susceptible for infections. That's the tick. <coughs> we had a very interesting research program in, in the border area between Switzerland and, and Germany, the Black Forest and the Swiss Park opposite to the River Rhine. And the River Rhine makes this area, which is rather for our area, a warm area. So <coughs> the ticks, they feel extremely well in these thick forests. There is a lot of deer, as carrier. There is the typical tick situation in this area. And they did examinations on all the farmers, on all the forest workers, and on children who just live there as, as uh, inhabitants of this area, and they found 80% positive with Western blot and IgG for tick disease, for Borrelia, Proctophore. 80% were positive, but only about 2% were were actively diagnosed and had symptoms. So most of these positive, and for your thinking, typical Lyme diagnosis, they would have here, they would have the diagnosis Lyme, but they had no symptoms. So we are in a situation that the test on which the diagnosis basis is not an accurate test because we find it all the time in non-sick patients too. Especially the Western blot you can't use for the diagnosis and especially not for the indication for the treatment. This is the spider, the tick is a spider, it's a small spider. One third of the ticks were carrying Borreliosis, Borrelia, Proctophore. One tenth to one twentieth of the tick bite bitten patients, they <coughs> became later stage one, with an incubation time of about two to three weeks. That's a typical incubation time. One third of the Borreliosis one patients got Borreliosis two. And again, one to hundred of the diagnosis Borreliosis type two or stage two got the, the stage three. So you have from the tick bite to stage three, you have less than one 
per million, uh, per thousand, less than one per thousand, much less than one per thousand. This means that there must be some other causes. This was, <coughs> this study showed me that we have to look for other causes, and also the fact that the bacteria, which clearly would respond to antibiotics, why isn't it eradicated? And why are these people still sick? It can't be from the Borrelia. There must be other factors too. And we began to clearly, <coughs> to clearly look for these backgrounds. And nowadays, I'm absolutely clear about that the it's not the bacteria, it, it is the milieu, the so-called inner milieu, which enables the, the disease. And what means this inner milieu? The metabolic milieu, the intestinal system, the acid-base situation, and <coughs> the toxicity, and the viruses, and, 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 and many things which interact so much that the bacteria, which is not even the cause, but the co-cause makes, uh, makes this effect. But out of my 15 patients from the United States, there was not a single one would, who was tested for cell de deficiency problems. For <coughs> Some were tested for genetic issues of not being able to detoxify, but none of them was tested for the neurotropic and lymphotropic viruses. This means viruses which makes very similar expressions. And viruses, they rather get worse when you give antibiotics. And this was the issue. Not a single one of these severe patients who did not have viruses positive. Okay, now the doctors in here, I hope that there are many doctors, they could say, well, if you look at all the patients' viruses levels, the IgG, you find many. Yes, that's true, because it is a co-factor. It is true. But as with the Borrelia, virus alone doesn't make the disease. It needs, even there, it needs other uh, causes too. <coughs> so this is the background. Lyme disease, now, on these issues, we began to build up our paradigms. And I know this, these paradigms are not orthodox paradigms, not at all. It's not a mechanistic. A disease is caused by a bacteria, and that's why you have to give antibiotics or antibacterial uh, remedies. No, a disease is multi-causal, always multi-causal. One third of the <coughs> Lyme disease is a toxic disease. I will talk about this later. <coughs> there are numbers parallel to toxic load in water. You know this from my, my YouTube presentation. I, I don't go over it all. very quickly. Unrestricted, this is the important part, unrestricted detoxification program the expression of the Lyme disease, the so-called Lyme disease, always gets better. Therefore, an intensive detoxification is the key to the, to the, to the healing, to the real healing. And when I say so, and I look at my many patients, well, why are they so toxic? Is it the environment? Is it the teas? Is it whatever? No, some of them, they also have, <coughs> they also have a detoxification lack. They can't detoxify because they have a genetic weakness for detoxification. And we test this on every patient, the glutathione transferase, epoxid hydrolase, and the methyl transferase. These three enzymes we test genetically in the patients and in European average patients we have about 5% who have the lack of one of these enzymes. In New England patients, that's not my numbers, it is 12%. We have here a higher incidence of this specific genetic lack of being able to detoxify. Test about it. 
It's cheap testing. Glutathione transferase, epoxy hydrolase, and methyl transferase. It's three genetic tests. In Switzerland, it costs about 80 francs, which is uh, $85. So it's really nothing compared with the cost which these patients develop. It's nothing. And it gives us a specific information. If a patient has this genetic lack, we have a specific treatment to increase the glutathione transferase. We can give reduced glutathione. We can give <coughs> ACC and other substances. Lime, nowadays, it comes, well, not nowadays, Lyme disease comes from Borrelia. Borrelia is a spirochete. And it is the same kind of bacteria we, as we had 100 years ago, the epidemics of syphilis. I don't know if there are homeopaths in here, but on patients who have significant neurological symptoms, we act with a homeopathic remedy which comes from syphilis, it's luacinum, luacinum in a D200. And in the beginning, we give D200 luacinum about once or twice per week. But this is a homeopathic adjunct treatment. But it makes this information of the syphilis kind of bacteria, I don't say it is syphilis, of course not. It's not this bacterium, but it's a similar kind of spirochete, and that's why it also makes a similar <coughs> disease. Homeopaths say it's the plague of the modern, as syphilis was a hundred years ago. <coughs> Antibiotics, and I know very well that this is a stigmatized theme here, antibiotics make the cause of the disease worse. Not in the beginning, but on the long term. <coughs> Under antibiotics, Borrelia changed to a cyst-building, cell deficient form, which we can see in the dark field microscopy, and infiltrate the tissue with low metabolism. This means they just hang around in the tissue, the cell deficient form, they build like clots, of many bacteria and they make like cystic forms in the tissue and as they have destroyed cell walls, they are cell wall deficient, main part of the cell wall is away, so they no more react to antibiotics. But <coughs> they can they are increased in activity by several kind of influences on the lymphatic system. For example, a hyper protein diet. I'm strictly against hyperprotein diet, which is very frequent nowadays because it feeds these bacteria in the tissue and in the mesenchyme, in the lymph system. <coughs> and now, most important paradigm, it's never only the Borrelia bacteria which causes the symptoms. <coughs> no, it is always other loads especially viruses, which are co-active. And under these viruses, it changed over the last years. Nowadays, <coughs> we have the Cytomegalia virus, which is very, very free. Cytomegalia virus, which you can measure, IgG, IgM, and I can't believe, as a doctor who learned 35 years ago, that we have these viruses which former times made an acute disease, but nowadays under the toxic influences, viruses no more make the same expression as we old guys studying for 20 years ago, 30 years ago, have learned. Viruses express nowadays totally different. And we see many patients who have only high IgG for the doctors in here and no IgM in their tests. So it's a totally new kind of finding. The co-acting viruses, as I said, are <coughs> the lay people may excuse me, so because I'm getting a little bit more in the details, but what we see is chlamydia, which is a bacteria, parasitic bacteria, or cytomegalia, or what we 
suggests that it could be quite often, because we find it in the lab testing, is uh, vaccination viruses, immunization viruses, like the tick immunization, meningoencephalitis virus, hepatitis, and flu vaccine. Coxsackie virus gets more and more active also, and makes the typical pain symptom, and the typical cardiac symptoms, which Lyme patients stage three very often have the severe muscle pain. And in these patients, like also in your book, we found the Coxsackie virus. But she never had the acute Coxsackie expression, but she had it a very high level. And by removing this out of her system with no salts, I will talk about this, it, the level comes down and the, the, the pain gets better. <coughs> Toxic additional load, especially mercury and arsenic. Another important paradigm, Lyme cases stage 3 always have severely disbalanced fatty acids and phospholipid levels. <coughs> Everybody tends to eat cholesterol free and avoids every good, every fat. But this is not only good, it can also be problematic, this anti-fat attitude. Because many of you, or of them, they do not take the good plant fatty acids like the plant oils, like for example flaxseed oil. And they have a significant lack on, especially the neurological ones, they have a significant lack of omega-3 fatty acids, especially DHA and EPA. Not only this, they find arachidonic acid elevated. The dairy consume in the United States tripled in the last 20 years. Arachidonic acid and linolenic acid comes from dairy and meat, pro meat eating, <coughs> and especially from dairy products. They are arachidonic acid rich, and they are especially heated ones. And so we have this pro-inflammatory fatty acid, which makes irritation of the cell walls, especially on the nervous cell walls. Palmitinic acid is also elevated. It has the same effect. It's a, <coughs> a saturated fatty acid and omega-3 fatty acids, which would protect from pain syndrome and from inflammatory expressions. The fatty acids deficiencies favorize the chronification of the viruses. And this is very important. And it makes the cell wall deficient bacteria even more, uh, that, that they produce even more. So it makes the cystic form come up the fatty acid disbalance. It's such an important thing. That's why day one, the patient comes to us, we test for viruses, we test and all these viruses, the lymph viruses, the neurotopic, which makes neural problems, and we test the fatty acids. And of course, more and more now, especially if the patients come from here, from the United States, we also test the genetic <laughs> profile of detoxification. I told you this already, these two phenomena are extremely important and we find it very important and very interestingly, we also find it the same profile we find in multiple sclerosis patients who destroy their, their myelone sheets. I don't say Lyme is multiple sclerosis, no, totally different but the expression can be very similar too. The immune system is densely connected to the nutrition. This is the next paradigm. That's why we test our patients for immune capacity or from, for immune overload. When I test a normal individual, well, so-called normal individuals as, as, as much as they still exist, 
in narrow based world. So <coughs> nobody's really known what is normal results. But <coughs> still we test the patients. When we test, we tested soldiers, Swiss, Switzerland soldiers who had no problem at all. We tested immune profiles on them and we found that even in this super healthy young men, we had about 50% who had a food allergy. But they didn't know because their body, being so healthy, still compensated. On <coughs> these Lyme patients, we found more than 90% of the patients who were significantly positive for food allergies. IgG4 we tested and we found in most of them several allergies. Very often gluten, which is celiac disease, but not the full expression of the gluten disease, but, <coughs> uh, but half, so to say, a minor form of of celiac allergy or to too many proteins, mainly the dairy. <coughs> and they have a lack of trace elements, which would also protect. So you see, it's a severe milieu change. And what we do according to the test findings, we just provide the minerals by IVs. We avoid to tell them what food allergens are the important ones and they have to avoid them. Why? Because when you take food, when you have a food allergy and you take this food intus, then you produce histamine. And histamine is a neural stimulator. That's why very often they are so nervous and hyperly because they have a food allergy. It's not a psychological thing. I remember very well your dear daughter, now fully normal. She has to be in college now or in, in class. But how was she in the beginning? Histamine up on the roof. Because it was a food allergy of a severe kind. But when you have protein allergy, you don't feel it. The dairy protein allergy, you don't feel. The patients do not notice. <coughs> you only can see it in the test because it takes about 70 hours from when you eat until you get the symptoms. And when you are dairy allergic, you take dairy product, milk or, or whatever, or, <coughs> or yogurt or ice cream and the reaction comes in 72 hours, in three days more or less, it's a T cell reaction. In the meantime, you add it several times already. So you are always on a level of, <coughs> of high histamine, and high histamine expresses very much when you have low manganese, when you have low zinc. And then we see the combination of the mineral Trace elements lacking, which was horrible. Even she had a good diet, a good nutrition. And, <coughs> and the IgG against food allergens, positive, we know this makes the histamine wash out and makes this neurological irritativity. So the hyper kind of reactivity of these uh, <coughs> patients. Now, what are we doing? The diet and the increased immune system. Now comes, <coughs> this has nothing to do with Lyme, just two very important, very interesting numbers. <coughs> in the United States and also in Germany and Switzerland, the health uh, department began to calculate what is the intake of the average population. And we had the US population after the war, after the Second World War, they were consuming in average about 45 grams of protein per day. This is what the body can process. And they had they also try to calculate the mineral intake of the average population and they defined it as 100%. Just to have a basic uh, information. This was the, the population's 
nutrition. 2008, the numbers are totally different. The protein intake of the average United States population is triple so high, triple as it was, and this is practically identical to Germany and to Switzerland. So to say <coughs> our civilization, nutrition, our wealth nutrition here in the Western states is massively hyperproteinized. And therefore we are so much against the protein-rich diet because it makes the body to more, even more acid and it feeds the deposit bacteria, nothing which the cystic form of the Borrelia likes more than this high amount of protein and acidity in the connective tissue. And there they express themselves. And even more important, the mineral intake is no more 100%, it is one quart of it, 25%. So this explains that within 60 years, our inner milieu changed absolutely significantly. Of course, we don't feel it like this, because this was a slow change of the average nutrition of our population, which makes that nowadays other bacteria, other viruses, are occurring because we need now the ones which like this hyper acid, hyper protein and too low mineral environment. They feel well. And if we take this milieu away from them, then they have no more their basics for living. We just take their nutrition away by diet, by giving minerals, they, the culture no more fits for them and they begin to be quiet or not even <coughs> being there anymore. <coughs> Good. Now this I can go very quickly over the so-called, we call it New England study, Borreliosis type 2 and 3 was absolutely parallel with, <coughs> with the toxic load. Now, <coughs> there is a study which is very interesting, which shows that there is a parallelity <coughs> between toxic load in the water. When we look from Philadelphia up to Portland, Maine, then we see <coughs> a parallelity between measurement of water in the, in the groundwater and the incidence of, of uh, expression of Borrelia. So it is something which is at least densely connected with toxic load too. I can't say more, but I just show you these very interesting numbers. The symptoms, I don't have to explain them. We have three phases. <coughs> Sim uh, phase one, not uh, always very, uh, very much symptom, fever, rash, then we have an erythema, uh, a ring from where the tick bite was, it uh, goes out, but very often the patients can't remember these phase one symptoms. Therefore, they are not sure afterwards if it really was. Perhaps they had a tick bite without even knowing. That's quite frequent. So, <coughs> after about four weeks, they begin, no, after about one to two weeks, they begin to produce a IgM antibodies, and after about four to six weeks, they begin to produce IgG, the long-term antibodies against Borrelia. The phase three is much more rare, and <coughs> I say nowadays most of the so-called phase 3 patients whom we have are side effect patients from the treatment because they get the, the cell wall deficient forms. And these cell wall deficient forms 
they are, you know, the bacteria gets treated by with tetracyclines, for example, one antibiotics. And the function of the tetracycline is that it destroys the cell wall. But not all get fully destroyed. In many, you just have a weakening or a part solution, a bit, part destruction of the cell walls and the bacteria survive and they make the so-called cell wall deficient form which afterwards are no more accepting the <coughs> are no more uh, reacting to the antibiotics for them you can't do anything more or less except change the milieu <coughs> The cystic cell wall deficient bacteria, they even build autoimmune reactions against the tissues in whom in which they are. Therefore, we have this significant increase of Hashimoto's, we have this significant increase of, of lupus erythematodes in our population because of the production of cell wall deficient bacteria through antibiotic treatments, especially when you, when you do it long term. The several deficient bacteria no more react to antibiotics. Okay, here we see these typical several deficient forms. We can see them in the dark field. I can't speak now a lot about dark field. It's a, a test which is by orthodox medicine not acknowledged that it it's, it's very a lot of doubt behind, especially in the orthodox world. But <coughs> we do this and we find the change of the internal milieu. And we also do it in all arthritis patients. And we look if there are such bacteria around. Because then we have to test. I will show you the test results afterwards. <coughs> the serol serology test, the blood test, I, I wrote here. <coughs> But the very important ones are the lymph tropic. This means viruses which interfere with the lymph system. And the neurotropic. This means viruses which make neurological diseases because they attack the nerve cells. These are the important ones. And you can't believe heavy metals. Where do they come from? Very difficult to say. Now, <coughs> You, you allowed me to show the example. She was about 20 some years, had Lyme since many years, married many neurological problems and chronic severe neuro pain. The pain was so long term, but she's not the only. I told you we had 50 such patients and it's always the same expression. The pain gets more and more and they get more and more anti-pain remedies. Very often they are even put on morphines or on synthetic kind of, of, <coughs> of morphines, which for our understanding is especially bad because it blocks all the body own reactions, reactivity the morphines. It's much worse than the, than the non-steroidal anti inflammatory remedies <coughs> and they get so irritated that they get in a way hypery as your dear doctor was always I always told you this is not a psychological issue it's absolutely this girl is normal but she is severely sick and we have to build up the immune youth his stomach was on the on the roof so high and if you would be bitten by 100 bites or 100, 100 uh, ants or, or bees, you would be like this in the way too, because you would have a high, high histamine. And this is what she had all the time. Who wonders that she was hyper? <coughs> and she couldn't think, really, because she had this metabolic expression of the food allergy. <coughs> And, well, she had many specialists. She had months and many different antibiotics. Even IV, even IV, very, very bad. Because now, today, after two years of treatment, more or less, she's healthy. 
<coughs> she changed. What would be the future of this girl if she wouldn't have had this treatment? It's only a question. I don't want to judge. Now, what tests are we doing? We do DNPS testing. That's a, a solvent which binds heavy metal and brings it out over the urine and we test the urine. And we do also hair mineral analyses. You see here the hair mineral analysis and it shows all these metals extremely high. Silver, cadmium, mercury and even gold. From where does she have this? Did you know that Rosephine, the most used antibiotic for IV, has a stabilizer which is thionosol and it contains mercury. And it's not declared, but it contains mercury. And I can nearly say out of the, of the toxic analysis if a patient had toxic uh, antibiotics before. <coughs> They look like patients who had chemotherapy. They have similar pictures. And not only this, we also saw that the minerals, they were totally out of balance. Below are the good minerals, up are the bad, <coughs> the bad stuff. This is the other test for, bio, uh, for, for toxic load. And it is typical against a healthy, young girl who was never confronted with toxic load, which we would know. But still, she had nickel very high. Very often we see high nickel in patients who have bridges or who are retainer for the teeth, for the position of the teeth, because they, former times, they, they contain nickel or crumbs, which contains nickel. <clears throat> or dentures for the position of the teeth, which also very often contained nickel. This can come from form and time. If you would have enough zinc, which is a base element which you would need for the cells, if you have this too low, the antagonist to nickel, then the nickel expresses much more in the body and makes also nerves. Then she had, <coughs> she had tin and mercury. Mercury was up on the roof here, you can see, very, very high. This nearly proves that she had uh, <coughs> long-term antibiotics. Now, the viruses, you see more and more part reasons come together. The viruses, we also tested, and she had <coughs> Epstein-Barr, and she had varicella virus, and she had also Cytomegalia virus positive here. So these were the viruses which just were a permanent load in her body. Well, I'm so glad to find all these things. The bad cases are the ones in whom I don't find such things, because here we can work on it. And we did nothing. I'm not a single day treated the Borrelia, but Two years, we treated the toxic load, the intestinal flora, the food allergy, she changed the diet fully, and <coughs> we did upbuilding with minerals which were on the, on the bottom of the levels. That's what we did. We did a milieu treatment and not an antibacterial treatment. <coughs> For the viruses, now this is the homeopathic approach, we did no salt drops. We have of all these viruses, we have homeopathic solutions which we give to patients in form of drops in a very, very low uh, <coughs> solution or a high solution. This means a very high potency of high solutions many times dissolved. And we give these drops and the body learns we have to work against Cytomegalia, we have to work against herpes virus, we have to work against the ones which we give in these homeopathic solutions. But this is a long-term process which increases the dosage so that it makes an unconscious, very low 
effect which we slowly, slowly, slowly increase until these antibio uh, antibodies are no more visible, they come down. <coughs> so we dissolve or we train the viruses. There is no other possibility to do this than with the homeopathic because there are no orthodox antiviral remedies. Again, fatty acids, I told you already, again the same profile. High arachidonic acid, which creates inflammation and membrane destruction, and low omega-3 fatty acids. Even though she had a good diet, this family, this looks for their children. It's not that they did it wrong, but the body did not take it up because she had a destroyed intestinal membranes, because she had food allergies. <coughs> Now comes something which is super specific. We have this, you don't have this test in the United States, which tests the cell efficient bacteria. All these showed so much positive as cell deficient bacteria. We have to give remedies from the Sanum company. There is a company in Germany who produces cell wall parts of such bacteria in a homeopathic solution, the cell wall parts which you give to the patients and P and lock come together, cell wall deficient bacteria gets combined with these cell wall, cell wall preparations and they are recognized again. And the immune system begins to work against very specific. Important is it needs very, very long term. Very long term. There is only one company worldwide which makes these cell wall reparations. It's the Heptins of the Sun Company <coughs> from Germany. But they are by pleomorphic cell productions, a biomedicine company in the United States. They are now represented. Again, here, the comprehensive stool test, typical pattern, pathogenic. Coli, anaerobic bacteria which would prevent, which would prevent the, the, the body from toxic load. We have a big detoxifier in our intestines if we would be healthy and the big, the big, the big blotting paper, so to say, in our intestine, the big sponge is the intestinal bacteria the anaerobic Lactophilus bifidus and Bacteroides. And these Bacteroides bacteria, they take, like sponges, the intestines, uh, through the intestinal wall, they take toxins out. When we test these on chronic patients, we find such finding. Bacteroides low, bifidus low, Lactophilus very low and we have to supply, but this takes at least a year to upbuild these bacteria. And it, they only do upbuild if you no more disturb your intestinal system through food allergies, which we tested before. Well, I could stop here because the, <coughs> the consequence is very simple. We have to change the milieu. We have to look for all these path reasons and very specifically, that's why I say not a single patient has the same treatment. We have to rebuild the whole internal milieu, the intestinal walls, and <coughs> to, to rebuild the, the place element uh, levels and so on. And then, the expression of the so-called Borrelia disappears because these bacteria, they lose their milieu which enables them to get aggressive. There is another point that's a, that's a test for the food allergy. Food allergy is also very frequent, but not only in Borrelia patients, in Lyme patients, but in all reoccurring patients with infections. <coughs> which we have. We have now another tool, which is the thermography, the, the regulation thermography, the alpha device, which, has, which shows us the significance of this tool. I don't have the picture here. The significance of 
full velocity for the body very much. And here, again, the, <coughs> the dark field examination. This was two years later, or one and a half year later. We see the very healthy and active immune cells, the monocytes, which work against specifically the monocytes, which are activated and work against viruses. So, the effective treatment, I told you already. It is <coughs> nothing else than a new, new treatment. It takes long-term, continuous treatment, but it works. We have more than 80% per percent of the patients who really got healed, and they have no more, or nearly no more uh, problems. I think we have to think differently, so, and the patient has to be willing to do a long-term treatment on many, many different levels, and what they normally don't like is a significant change in nutrition, which is needed normally, not in all, but in most patients. And this needs a something to do themselves for the decision. Again, I told you already, detoxification, immune system, increase the upbuilding forces with nutrition and supplements, and the bacteria are not the cause, but that's the problem. And you will see, <coughs> you will see uh, in my book, if you want to read something, I, I wrote two books. This is one, which is about nutrition and about these backgrounds. <coughs> Then I have the big book, which is called Biological Medicine. And we do, when the patient comes, the first week is quite an intensive detoxification. Well, the first week is the diagnostic week. But we begin, we use the time to begin the shift, the metabolic shift, by doing an intensive treatment change, uh, diet change to, to do <coughs> it. And it's, fully described in my book what you have to do, the detoxification is one week. Then, the three weeks following, if you don't want to do the intensive one, you can go just step one into the three weeks core, which changes your intestinal milieu and your metabolism, and then comes the maintenance diet, which is Easy, easily do it. My wife and myself, we do maintenance diet since years and you can enjoy it. It's simple and <coughs> my wife wrote a lot of, of recipes in this book, come from her. So it's doable, it's simple recipes, not chef cook, star cook kind of, of meals. It's simple meals. Anyhow, you should you should do a simple nutrition. This is very important. And these are the three steps of my program. Again, toxic load. You have seen this in the, my, in my YouTube presentation. The toxic load, which needs years and years and years to upbuild. In some, in some situation, only a little tick bite <coughs> has become in addition and the barrel overflows. Why do we have so many farmers and forest workers and even children along the river Rhine who have high levels of anti antibodies against borreliosis, but they are fully healthy because they got the tick bite and the barrel was not full. So they compensate. What we do is removing the amalgams, very important. The young girls normally no more have amalgams, zero filling. And we give LGs, LGs, chlorella or spirulina or plumat LCs, there are different brown LGs and others, which detoxify very much. The LGs <coughs> are something very important. Then we give the fatty acids and vitamin deficiencies, which is omega-3 fatty acid. Very often in urological patients, we also have to give alpha-lipoic acid and phosphatidylcholine, because this stabilizes the nerve cells. Alpha 
lipoic acid, about 1.2 gram per day. We give normally even, sometimes even higher, for several months. And phosphatidylcholine, which is a substance which the nerve cells have in their, in their membranes. Phosphatidylcholine, you can buy here. In Switzerland, it's not even available, but here you can, can go to the vitamin shop and, and buy it there for very cheap. So, it would be a substance which is available, and it's so much nerve stabilizing. Of course, we test if it's needed or not. And the hyperacidity and hyperprotein situation comes through wrong nutrition. There are, these are the three most frequent causes for chronic bacterial diseases. This goes into the details too much, heavy metals and other toxins, allow wrong and pathogenic bacteria to, to grow. We have other treatments like ozone treatments and such, which just make the cause of the disease very much quicker, so the immune system gets boosted much quicker, and that's the nerve and uh, the, the viruses against which we, which we <coughs> the nose drops, which I explained to you already.